The term close reading draws its roots from the passion for talking and writing about text. In this session of close reading, Julia is going to teach day one of a three-day cycle. This is a small group session for close reading. You will find Julia's three-day plan attached to this video course. Hi readers, how are you? Good. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for today. So I've gathered you here today because you guys are doing some big work. You guys are moving and transitioning from like reading fiction to reading nonfiction. And that's a big jump and a big change, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So I thought we could come here today because it's really important that readers can identify the genre when they're reading. Okay. And readers do this by previewing the text in order to know the genre. And there's three easy steps that we can do this in. You ready? Yes. The first one, we read the title and the subtitles or subheadings. The second thing we can do is we scan for text features. So we look for photographs, we look for uh, diagrams, captions, absolutely. And then the third step is we quickly read topic sentences in order to figure out the genre. And we determine, if, is it fiction, poetry, literary nonfiction, or informational nonfiction? Okay. Notice how Julia has her anchor chart ready for teaching this lesson. She will refer to this chart throughout her lesson. Do you think I can model and show you guys how this is done? Yes. Okay, so I brought this article that I've been reading and I couldn't, just by picking it up, in the magazine there was like fiction and nonfiction and I couldn't really determine like what genre is this? So I'm gonna do the same steps that I just told you guys. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is read the title and any subtitles or subheadings. So, oh, big and bold right here, right? Hooray, it's Children's Day. That's my title. But does that really tell me what genre? Not, no. no. Okay. Then, oh, more bold right here. The changing holiday. Well, holidays, like I'm thinking like I already know, right? Like Thanksgiving's coming up. Julia is explicitly teaching through her modeling of the strategies and demonstrating her thinking aloud. This is a time for teacher demonstration. Julia is teaching through the lens of orientating the text. Halloween, those are holidays. Those are real things. But... Hmm, I'm still not sure. Lots of ways to celebrate. Hmm, this is kind of giving me some clues, but it's also kind of telling me right now I can eliminate poetry. Like I'm already noticing there's really no stanzas here. It's not really written with like the way that I normally see poetry. So I'm gonna kind of eliminate that, but I'm still gonna keep going. So step two, I need to scan for text features. Well, one stands out to me right away, doesn't it? The photograph, yeah. So I see this photograph, hmm, and I'm noticing like, looks like children, maybe, oh, for Children's Day. Looks like this girl's like smiling, maybe she's like playing soccer, like kicking a ball. Yeah. There's field. only children, yeah. There's kites, they're in a field. That seems pretty fun, and it's, I'm noticing that these are like real people, it's not a cartoon. Yeah. So I'm starting to think that maybe we're in like nonfiction. But I've got to do step three to really be sure. So step three says quickly read topic sentences. So I'm just going to highlight so you guys can see what I mean by that. So it says on May 5th, you might want to be in Japan. Guys, Japan is a real country, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm starting to really think like maybe it's not, not, maybe it's not fiction. Maybe we're in nonfiction, but I'm going to keep going because there's two different types of nonfiction. Mm-hmm, and informational, right? Okay, people in Japan have celebrated Children's Day for more than 700 years. Wow. That's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. It's like a tradition, right? Yes. Okay, so I know, and that's like the changing holiday is Children's Day. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Long ago, May 5th used to be known as Boys' Day. Oh, that ties into how it's changed and what Children's Day is now. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Children's Day is part of Golden Week, and schools and workplaces are closed all over Japan. So again, it's kind of giving me information about what Children's Day is, and how it's changed, and how it's celebrated. Hmm. Okay. It says Japanese people eat special treats on Children's Day. Again, it's like giving me information about what I can learn about Children's Day, and I'm kind of making these connections to other holidays, like Christmas or Thanksgiving. We have like a big turkey and like our families gather, right? And we have time off from yes. school. 
Okay, my last one. Children's Day is, is a colorful, joyful day for kids and grown-ups. Oh. I think it's more children than grown-ups. Yeah. yeah. But I'm still thinking, like, if I look here at my chart, I'm thinking... Notice how Julia refers back to the anchor chart to review the process for close reading. It's not really a true story or about a person's life, so I can eliminate literary nonfiction. So I'm thinking that this article is going to be informational nonfiction because I'm reading this and I'm learning information about a subject, which is Children's Day. Okay, so now it's your turn to try. I brought you all. Everybody grab a pen. You have a different article. And your job is to work through steps one through three to determine which genre you're reading. Notice that each child receives an article based on her independent reading level. This enables all the students to be able to do the work. Okay, so I want you guys to start at number one and really think through what genre am I reading? And don't forget, once you think you have your genre, go ahead and jot it at the top, okay? Go ahead and get started. And I'll have my example here to help. So what's the first thing you're doing? Watch Julia as she checks in with students to see who needs coaching. She actively takes notes on each child that she can refer to later. What does your dad tell you? Does that give you a hint into a genre? A little bit? Okay, keep going. Oh, sorry, go ahead and make sure you label your title. Awesome, keep going. I heard you, you see some subtitles? Yeah. Perfect. So read those and then think, you can always think back and say like, hmm, how does this connect back to my title? How is this all connecting together? Okay, great, keep going. <coughs> a big paragraph. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And sometimes like if it feels like it's a little too long, you can always like chunk it and just like split that in half. So you read like the first part and think, what does this say? Or by reading that topic sentence, that's going to help you to kind of tell you what the paragraph is going to be mostly about. Okay. But I like that you labeled your picture. Awesome. Keep going. How are you doing over here? Good. What are you finding? Subtitles and the title. Is there any genre that you can eliminate right now? Fiction. You're thinking. Why are you thinking? Notice how Julia refers back to her anchor chart throughout her coaching into students. Lean prompts are essential to teaching into independence. Because this is something that is for real. Because they, um, there are parks. Mm. And what do you know? That there are many different this kinds of ethno parks. So it's something that you've kind of that you're kind of aware of, right? Good. Keep going because you know what? If we eliminate fiction, you still have three more to go. Okay. So we want to keep like thinking about what genre we're in. Beautiful. Keep going. So you want to make sure that you read like that very first sentence like I did in your paragraph. And that's going to give you a little sneak peek to whether you're reading about like a real person's life or if you're writing about a real life topic. Okay? So that's going to help you determine whether it's literary nonfiction or if it's going to be informational nonfiction. Okay? Alright, keep going. 
How you doing, Jeremiah? Three hundred. What else did you notice? Yeah. Did you know that like the next time we are gonna be working about we're gonna be working on those bolded words? You probably read my mind. What about let's look at like your text features. Real, so I can exile poetry. It was a fiction. Yeah. This is not fiction. And how do you know? Because fiction is not read. Right. And so now read. Your next step is going to be to read. So you've scanned your text features. You read your titles and your subtitles and your folded words. Now your next step is to quickly read those topic sentences and determine is it literary nonfiction or is it informational nonfiction. Check it. Check it and I'll be back to you. Okay. What do you think? Okay. Why? Okay. Like, I saw this yeah. event for a race for a runner. So you've seen the Olympics before, right? You can kind of make that connection. Okay, so now you're going to determine, is this going to be about a real person's life and accomplishments that made them famous, or are you reading to learn new information about a subject? Hmm. That's where it gets tricky. we got to determine, like, which one is it going to be, okay? Okay, guys, take like another minute to really determine. It sounds like a lot of you guys are saying it's some kind of nonfiction. So just take a moment to decide, is this going to be literary, where it's about a person's life and their accomplishments that made them famous? Or are you reading informational, which is reading to learn new information about a subject? And go ahead and jot it at the top, okay? So just take another moment to do that. I think mine is informational nonfiction yeah. and not literary nonfiction because it is a true story, but it's not about a person's life. Mm -hmm. So you're reading to learn about what? National Park. I think mine is informational. Hang, hang tight because you're going to turn into a partner. Okay. Finishing up. You got it. Give me a thumbs up when you got it. You're finishing up. You got it. Oh, I see you got it. Okay. Quickly turn and tell your partner. In the end, Julia brings the group back together to do a quick turn and talk. Students will talk about the genre type and give evidence to support their thinking. Julia listens in to each group and prompts as needed. What do you guys think? And make sure you include that why. I think it's okay. okay. You can just tell me. My national park story is informational. It's real, but it's not because about it's not about a person's life, but it is a true story. story but not informational fiction, they don't have a life. It's a true so story. I think and it is you read to learn new information about a fiction. I think mine is not fiction. I think it's an informational fiction because um, 30 more seconds. Mine is also yeah. not talking about a person's life. Really it's talking about a tsunami. And I think it's an informational story because it's not talking about what a tsunami is. And it's talking about. It's really about finish up and then we're going to gather back together in just one more second, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so whew, we did some big work today, didn't we, ladies? Yes. Yeah. Julia wraps up the lesson with a link. She restates the teaching point and reminds students of the work they did today and how to transfer it to future reading. So remember, any time you pick up, whether it's a book, a magazine, an article, any time you go to read, especially when you start to read for independent reading, you want to close read to preview the text to know the genre, okay? Because we're not going to get tricked, are we? No. no. And we're going to do that by reading those titles and subtitles. We're going to scan for text features, and we're going to quickly read those topic sentences to determine our genre. When we meet again on Friday, you're going to bring these same articles, and we're going to tackle those tricky words. How's that sound? Yes. We are going to look out.
kind of things that are going to try to trick us up, right? Only <laughs> yeah. All right, off you go. Standard.